My name is Rody and I go to Willesden Primary School. Rosie attends Willingdon Primary School in Eastbourne, a mainstream school with a facility supporting hearing impaired children attached to it. Willingdon works hard to include Rosie in every aspect of school life. I'm Jan Pearman, teacher of the deaf and I'm head of the hearing support facility. At this hearing support facility we use total communication which generally encompasses all um, forms of communication. So depending on the child and depending on the context, we might use um, sign supporting English or signed English or BSL um, or oral communication or a combination of all of those depending on the child and what's needed at that moment. Not every school benefits from a team of signing TAs and a teacher for the deaf. But many of the strategies used at Willingdon can be employed at mainstream schools without additional facilities to enable hearing impaired children to access the curriculum fully. This programme focuses on those strategies. Rosie is severely deaf in the right ear and she's got a severe to profound loss in the left ear, which means that with a good use of hearing aids and a radio aid in school, she can access speech in good conditions. That's right, because you're going to tell me how much we need to put in. I was a bit nervous when I came to Wilton Primary School because I'd never been in a mason store before. But then I thought, thought it was really good fun because I've got friends now. And this is my best friend, Bet. Um, I'm not deaf, but I like signing, it's good fun. Rosie spends about 10% of her time um, in the facility. For other children, that could be maybe as much as 50, 60, 70 per cent. But Rosie accesses the mainstream curriculum quite well with differentiation, so we just reinforce it. I think maybe... Every morning, Rosie and the other hearing impaired children have their hearing aids checked in the facility. This one sounds just a little bit like underwater. Dad! That's Dad, that's right. Dad. If they only use their hearing aids, the... Uh, the teacher would have to be very close to Rosie and there'd have to be no background noise and clearly that's not um, possible in a primary school. So we use a radio aid. Um, the teacher wears the transmitter and Rosie wears the receiver which is attached to her hearing aid. That means that the teacher's talking into a microphone positioned about here um, and they're on, then on a radio wavelength the sound is transmitted to Rosie's receiver so she can then be several feet away and she's hearing the teacher's voice as if she were only a metre away. I'm Miss Binks. I'm Mrs Taylor. I'm Miss Green. We're teaching assistants in a mainstream school. OK, we just have a look at next week. Start Every Friday, Jan and her team of TAs look over the teacher's plans for the following week to see what work needs differentiation. And then it's assembly. One of the biggest things we do on a Friday is actually making sure that we're consistent with the signs. There's lots of signs in the national, lots of words in the national curriculum uh, which don't have a sign language e equivalent, and we would have to decide amongst ourselves what we're going to use for that. He's going to start off just describing the, t the four categories, and he's, he's got four labels that he's going to then hold up. So that's carbohydrates, proteins, fats, minerals and vitamins. Mm. So the car so we need to be sure about the signs for that. The carbohydrates, um, I don't know that no, there I isn't a sign, a sign for, for carbohydrates. We'll just so sign carbohydrates. Um, yeah, because you can point to the word. Point to the, we won't have to finger spell it, that's a big word to... And then just after that, just carbohydrates. That's fine. My name is Mr. Sykins. Carbohydrates, well done. Wayne Sykins is Rosie's class teacher. An NQT, Wayne is still learning how to accommodate a deaf child in his classroom. I've had a lot of support from the school um, for supporting Rosie here. Um, I was offered the opportunity to go on a deaf awareness course when I started and it was very good. It really did help me understand how um, hearing impaired children uh, learn. Can we see that? Chocolates. Yes. Well done, Rosie. Good girl. For mainstream class teachers, it does involve more work um, having a hearing impaired child in the class. Um, they do need to be very meticulous in their planning and the timetable. 
and they, it's quite hard for them when they want to be flexible if a lesson is going well, when we need actually for them to stick to quite a tight structure. Used in all type of instructional tech. I work very closely with the TAs. Um, we meet in every morning and we discuss the lesson that's the lessons that are going to come up and the key words that may be used. Well, first thing we're going to talk about time connectives. So yeah. I've got all these words made up, and they're going to ask for different. I'm going to ask them for different time connectives. Right. If they can remember them and stick them on the board. We looked at the plans last week and actually talked about the signs because a lot are similar. So we've actually printed out the signs with the Super. words underneath Brilliant. that Rosie and Liam are going to have a set each in front of them on the table. Well, when we plan our lessons, it's, it's really important that we think and try and make everything as visual as we can um, so that all of the children understand exactly what is happening the whole time. And um, all the work connectors that I use, I'm going to put in a line on the board. OK, well, today we're doing um, an instructional text um, of how to make a healthy snack. Yeah. Um, but so that Liam and Rosie can visualise what we're doing, I'm going to make it first for them using the apricots, banana chips, etc., in front of them so they can see all the steps. So there isn't actually a sign that we can use apart from peach, small peach. So uh -huh. we've actually printed a picture of, of an apricot. Okay. And we can say it's similar to a peach, but small. Yeah, well, my greatest link for finding out if Rosie's understood me or not is through the, um, the TA. Like who she works with, and um, during the lesson, once the lesson has started, I'll always go over to the TA to make sure that I give them a couple of minutes to make sure Rosie's got it and the other deaf children um, understand uh, what has been said. Problems that Rosie encounters on a daily basis um, involved in the classroom are the teacher um, often moves around the classroom, which can make lip reading very difficult for her. Um, it's important for us to try and educate the teachers to try and get them to remain in the same place. The thing that I need to consider probably the most with Rose in the class is where she's sitting and where I am in relation to her. Um, she obviously needs to be able to see me and to be able to read my lips as well as um, be able to see her signer. Yeah, let's go. Also, I need to think about when I'm right on the board not to speak as well, otherwise she wouldn't know what I'm saying. Or, well, I'm ordering you, aren't I? So it's ordering language, let's say. You know, I hope Mr. Doe can be learned the more dying language. Sometimes Mr. Sykens gets to turn on the transmitter so she can't hear. So she keeps on saying, it's not on. I think the pace of the lessons in Year 6 is very fast and it takes an enormous amount of concentration for her to follow the teacher. She lip reads very well and um, most of the time she's following the teacher but she will swap over to look at the signer if she's got any doubts at all about what was said. But, can anybody see? And I think the hardest thing for Rosie is if she wants to ask questions back. Um, there's often not time because by the time we've processed in that information so she can access it, um, the teacher's often moved on. All children in, in class have moments when they are not focusing on what the teacher says and they might be looking out of the window, but they still might be half paying attention because they're half listening to what the teacher's saying. But for Rosie, when she needs those moments um, respite, she's actually completely cut off from what's going on. And that can mean that she misses important parts of the lesson. Um, and so it's up to the TA, really, who's supporting her um, at various points in the lesson to ensure that she's on task. Just remember it, you can include it. The skill we want Rosie to develop is to listen and uh, watch the person talking, so she's using her listening skills and her lip reading skills, but also to use the signer to confirm what she's heard or to reinforce for clarification, really. So the skill we want is for to be able to switch from the person talking to the person signing in order to gain all the information. Yeah, the other pupils act brilliantly towards Rosie. Um, she's very much part of the class. They um, help her and support her brilliantly. I think Mr Sagan actually quite likes having the TAs around in the classroom because he very much wants to take an active part uh, in communicating, obviously, Rosie directly. Uh, and many times he's asked us what a specific sign is so he can have a, a conversation quite fluidly with Rosie. Rosie, that's Is there anything... My relationship with Rosie is I speak to her on a one-to-one -one, um, and, and I, the signers are there if, if I can't communicate with them, but I'll always try and speak to her on a one-to-one, -one, first of all. It's really important for Rosie to take part in all aspects of school life, not just the mainstream curriculum, but the extracurricular activities. Thank <laughs> you.
um, she's just taking part in some football trials um, and we would decide whether she needs support for that or not. For something like football we would support at the beginning and then she's able to um, join in with the others without support. Signing is encouraged throughout the school. Um, all assemblies, concerts, Christmas productions are completely signed. And he shot and scored. Now Willingdon were two new up. Within mainstream schools, obviously many teachers are not going to sign, uh, and that's really why we're there to provide that sign support. So it's not essential that they sign. What we would expect from teachers is to learn the basics of good morning, hello, and greetings so they can have simple conversations with the student because it just makes such a difference to their life. Where else did he put the snake? So how does Rosie cope in group discussions? Rosie? Um, I don't Class discussions are, are difficult for Rosie. Um, I try as hard as I can to, when someone else says something, um, it's important that I repeat the question, repeat the answer that the child is given so that Rosie does, understands what other people are saying. Um, we do use a transmitter, which helps Rosie to hear. And if another child is speaking at length, they, we come up to the front and they're used to um, putting the transmitter on themselves. Um, and everyone's very good at doing that, so that allows her to hear. Okay, from the top. I don't flush the unusual loo and open the bathroom door. When the children are, in, are working in groups, we do have a conference mic that we can put on in the middle of the table and attach a transmitter to it um, so that all the children can be heard equally. Um. So does sharing a classroom work for Rosie and her hearing peers? Right. Benefits for other children um, are often the visual resources that we provide and differentiated work that we're providing for Rosie and the other deaf children are actually very beneficial for several other students within the class. What do you think? And sometimes our signs can clarify points that perhaps they would have missed. What do you think, Elliot? Rosie is um, very much accepted within a hearing peer group um, and this will have benefits when she leaves school within society. She'll obviously, hopefully, move seamlessly into the hearing world outside and into employment. What advice would the team at Willingdon give to other mainstream teachers? Make sure that they never start a lesson on a totally new topic without some sort of visual indication of what that lesson is all about. Yes, and I would say go on a deaf awareness course um, before you actually start teaching, then you have a wider knowledge of what is needed. Superb. One of the more important aspects is actually having the confidence to communicate with a, with a hearing impaired child. And it's being aware of how much a child can gain just through body language and tone of voice and your posture. Um, they can certainly know if they've done something well um, or conversely if, if they're doing something they shouldn't do. They can fully understand that without the adult necessarily being able to sign. And my advice to uh, any other teachers that are about to have hearing impaired children in, the, in their class is not to be afraid of um, communicating with them because even if you don't know sign language there are many other ways that you can communicate. Fantastic because you can say things about other people without them knowing and it's kind of like a secret language you can do and nobody else really understands so it's exciting. I welcome with Beth because she helped me look at the time when I did that can work, but the way it helped me and showed me how to work. It's fantastic having a friend like Rosie.